Okay, we appear to be live, so welcome to the stream. Go ahead and set everything up as I always do. Always got to uh, go on here on my phone and check things out. Make sure that everything is all going okay. And of course, we've got that. That sound. No, stop. Turn down the Turn down the volume. Get out of here. All right. Good. We're all good. Okay. And uh, let's see if we can find this here. Let's see if we can maybe refresh this. Got to see if I could just get stuff in sync. I want to do all this at the beginning of the stream so I don't have to uh, work on it consistently throughout the stream. So there you go. Okay. And uh, it appears that I, I, I usually have to like like paste this back into the stream every time um, not really sure why I have to do that but anyways um, okay almost done just got to get this chat up here run the YouTube chat script and then we can do the uh, the alt a and then the transparency thing very cool Okay, and I'm just making this a uh, little bit smaller here. Okay, so let's log on to Spiritus Mage Hunter. I got my Spellbreaker necklace on again. Excellent, excellent necklace. So happy about it. Okay, so with the volume here. I think I've got everything set up at this point. So we're gonna go around. This is the first World v. World and Chill that we have done. Uh, since the balance patch, balance patch was talked about for me on February 7th. For you guys, it was February 6th. And I got some more water. I actually prepared! I prepared! I actually got some water. Because I was low. I was low on my previous bottle. So I got this. Apples finished in first place. Apples wins. Okay, so there's the whole thing of the... Um, wow, look at that. Holy crap. That, there's the whole thing of about the, uh, the, the Lunar New Year going on right now. Um, I actually made a new build, and I recorded a new build video, and that will be coming out pretty soon. Probably this weekend, I'm guessing on uh, Saturday, maybe. I'm gonna make a prediction, or not? Maybe not Saturday. Maybe Sunday. For me, it'll be Sunday. Well, no, no, no. It'll be Sunday morning, or possibly Saturday night for you guys. But for me, it'll be Sunday morning. I'm gonna see if I can schedule. It's one of the one of the last times I'll actually get to schedule something, um, because after they take away my YouTube partnership, <laughs> that hurts to say. After they take that crap away, I'm uh, not going to be able to schedule uploads, which kind of stinks, but uh, we're going to deal with it. We're going we're gonna to make sure we, we deal with it in, a, in an okay manner. Okay, so let's go over... Let me see. Look at this. Of course we've got Stone Mist Castle. Of course. Makuma always has Stone Mist Castle. We are going to go to... We're going to go to the Jade Quarry Desert Borderlands. We're going to see if we can make it work there. And just going and making sure things are working right now. I, I did what I could to set up the alert box. I really wish that it would I really wish that I could get a better chance to actually test out the alert box. Alert box is a like a little sound and animation that plays when somebody subscribes or donates or whatever. Um and I I wish that I could get more chances to actually test that out, but but so far we haven't gotten the chance to do that during stream we haven't actually heard a real thing a, a real alert okay so uh, this is the banker as you can see I no longer on these on these weapon set things I no longer have the breastplates and there's a reason for that there's a really good reason for that it's because I have the legendary breastplate I have it and I'm so happy about having it. I actually have it for once. I have everything you need. 
And uh, let me see if I can go and sell some stuff before we get started here. Here we go. Just sell some of that junk here. We get the minor runes, minor sigils. Okay, very cool. And now let's move on. So we're starting with a pretty clean inventory. We still got some stuff uh, from... We still got the Winter's Blessing from Winter's Day, and then we've still got the... I've, I've got the Parables of the Gods here. Um, and we've got some stuff from Lunar New Year, okay? But other than that, we are just fine. I'll, also, we could go to this Laurel Merchant. I did get uh, today, my daily reward was 15 Laurels, so I'm up to 91 Laurels. Very cool. I could use that to get an ascended amulet or something along those lines if I wanted something ascended. It would take 50 ectos if I wanted an accessory, but I could technically get it. The only problem is that they're only core stat sets, so you'd have to kind of keep that in mind um, because basically I've got, uh, what do I have? I have assassins and marauders here, so, I, so if I wanted assassins, I don't even know if I could get assassins accessories here. Can I? Because this is power toughness vitality. This is this stuff is soldiers gear. This is power toughness ferocity. That's cavaliers. Uh, same thing, cavalier. You've got precision toughness condition damage. I believe that's is that that's not sinister. That's something else. Okay, you got uh, same thing here. We've got power precision ferocity. That's that's berserkers here. Berserkers. Uh, Plague Idol is Condition Damage, Toughness, Precision, Vitality. That's a little weird, okay. Uh, but fine. <laughs> um, you got Power, Precision, Vitality for us. This is this is Marauders here. This is a Marauders accessory. But it's, but it's actually not technically Marauders. It's Berserkers and Valkyries. Do you see how it's like, it's like uh, 56 Precision and 74 Vitality? Whereas my, my Sparking Petrified Wood is true marauders that's 92 power 92 precision uh, 49 vitality and ferocity so so it te what that tells me is that my rings are actually not the right stats that they're just berserkers and valkyries they're not actually marauders but that's fine because in reality what i actually want is assassins and i don't think they actually i don't th i don't even know how to get assassins rings um you got power precision toughness here um, looking for assassins here. I want one more assassins because I already have an assassins. Oh, this is power precision toughness. Okay, that's knights. Okay. Well, dang it. Okay, so there's no there's no assassins thing there um, for the ascended rings. I don't believe there's any assassin things there either. Uh, and then the infusions. You could get world view world infusions. Okay, but uh, that's not something we really want. Uh, if we were going to go for that, then we would probably go for some other kind of um, just like amulet enrichment or something like that. Um, so what else do we have here? What are these uh, amulets that we've got? We've got Power Toughness Vitality, which is uh, soldiers. Basically, I think the same stat sets. Let's go ahead uh, down here is Power Precision Condition Damage. Okay, so there's a little bit of something different there. Um, third Place Metal, Power Precision Toughness. Basically, we're looking for Power Precision Ferocity but main stat precision okay there's power precision condition damage um power precision toughness night gear power precision toughness and uh power toughness healing power that's not it that's not that's definitely not what we're looking for power toughness healing. there's a lot of stuff with the same stuff okay uh the celestial stats eyes of abaddon whatever i i have janthier okay that's fine. Power, uh, sorry, precision, toughness, healing, power, condition, damage. That's not at all what we need. Power, precision, vitality for us. This is another. This is another case where it's actually berserkers and vital is berserkers and Valkyrie. It's not actually um, marauders. This is power. Uh, see, see how you only got eighteen precision on there. That's not. That means that it's just some extra stats added in. It's not actually. This is berserkers. Okay, we actually do not need an Assassin's Amulet. I just discovered that because uh, we already have an Assassin's <laughs> Amulet. So there you go. We don't even need that. I do not know where to spend my laurels currently. I'm not going to just spend them all without without any other kind of use for them. But but uh, but I do want to know where I where I should spend them. So uh, we're currently at zero participation. I was playing a little bit earlier. 
and I was able to get up to tier 6 participation and I unlocked some rewards on the reward track and whatnot and I got uh, the first diamond chest yeah the first diamond chest almost to the second alright so there's that uh, however okay let's see let's see over here um, we've got this quartermaster here there's that that supervisor is still alive of course because he's still on a, a timer of over a minute boom okay and um, I also I, I yesterday in the um, in the stream I opened some black lion chests I got this this backpack and uh, it's actually I got a glider skin as well let me see let me show you guys got the griffin hatchling glider so it's just like this griffin just trying to hold me up just struggling I love the celestial rooster glider I just I love that thing it just these chickens just trying so hard to just hold you up it's just so heavy and that's really funny to me um, probably my favorite one is the ugly wolf yeah that is pretty ugly there's um well this one is kind of cool I like the classic glider there's there's like a classic thing and let's see if I can find it here necrotic glider inferiorarium grasping phantom no I'm there's there's a there's a really really cool classic glider that I really want to um Oh my goodness. Okay, there's something that I just saw as an alert on my phone. Floral glider. I know there's a classic glider. Where is it? Classical glider. Yeah, that's a really cool one. I really like that. And it looks like they already killed the uh, the supervisor. I think my sound is a little too low because I couldn't hear them at all. But that is okay. But as you can see, I have a couple of them. I have the Geomancer glider right here. My the Bloodstone glider is probably the favorite one. Favorite one that I have. Favorite one that I actually have. But the classical glider is probably my favorite one of all time. Just it it just has that just conventional glider look. Like I'm not interested in all this this visual noise and everything. Look at this stuff. I'm not interested in that. The hawk wings glider um, could be cool. Golden feather wings, right? Like that's, that's not visually intrusive or anything. That's not too bad. Um, the wings of love is visual noise. You get this. Actually, this is not that bad. Like I said. Uh, let's see what else is there. The snowflake got glider. No, I don't like the visual noise. The exalted glider. No thanks. Um, that's fine. Soul river. No, probably not. The crystal crystal arbiter. It's a li it's got a little bit of visual noise, but it's not really that bad. Black feather and white feather, yeah, that's pretty cool. What's the difference? Oh, this is just like uh, hawk wings, but then black feather, that's pretty cool. I probably would love that one. Um, you know, besides the classical one, because the classical one actually looks like a glider that you would build, whereas that you would build, whereas the basic glider doesn't even look like a glider. It doesn't. It doesn't even look like a glider. Looks like crap. That's what it looks like. And uh, I think we should eat some different food here. Uh, we could do the Dragon's Revelry Star Cakes. I mean, we have some. Might as well eat them. And probably not going to use the fried golden dumplings because those are pretty useful for concentration. We absolutely do not need concentration, so uh, we're just going to do this. And uh, does this increase concentration? Oh, it does. We get increase. Uh, concentration and expertise as well so that's always nice excellent we're gonna go ahead and go to these ruins we gotta get started on these ruins here quite quiet today I wonder if anything special is going on in the news recently whereas this is where people are don't want to come Sejin is not even here. Usually Sejin comes. Should probably be here soon. Okay. And we get the veteran planes worm. Why don't we just kill this guy? Just, uh, you know, we're not going to make it to tier 3 by that time. We're only at tier 2. Let's just kill this guy. Right? It's, uh, it's actually not part of... 
the dailies, but you know, sometimes you just gotta kill stuff, right? Sometimes you just gotta kill, just murder, okay? Just, you just gotta murder stuff. Honestly, even though Spellbreaker was slightly nerfed in the balance patch, I think probably we're gonna be able to circumvent that because, what is this? I think we're going to be able to circumvent that because it actually didn't really affect my build at all. Um, like, basically, the only two nerfs that Spellbreaker received were in... Let me see, where were they? They were in Loss Aversion, which had just nerfed the damage that it put out, and then they were in Enchantment... No, 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 they weren't even Enchantment Collapse, because it just it, they just updated a tooltip right there. So it's just basically it has a one second internal cooldown, but that was, that was already there. They just updated the tooltip to reflect that. Um, and then uh, the other nerf, it was to loss aversion, then the other nerf was to Winds of Disenchantment, where instead of uh, pulsing every half second, now it pulses every second. So instead of removing 20 boons, you can remove up to 10. Uh, I really don't know if that, boon, or if that nerf was warranted or not, but either way, I don't even use the skill in my build, so I don't really feel like it's useful. Perhaps there could be a trait for Spellbreakers where... You know, if you do Enchantment Collapse, then perhaps it buffs uh, Winds of Disenchantment, where that pulses every half second again, or perhaps it removes two boons every pulse instead of one. Um, which, which that could, if it removes two boons every pulse instead of one, that could allow more, it could still allow the counterplay. Because it's not just stripping all your boons right away, you do have some time to get away, but if you stay in there, you're going to lose the boons, you know, just as fast. You're gonna lose 20 boons within uh, 10 seconds. So that that there is another um, idea that would still technically be a nerf to Winds of Disenchantment, but you know, still giving people more time to react and everything, which which uh, which is always good. Like if something is really powerful, then people need to be able to react to it. Um, you know, I I definitely agree with that. Like uh, for example, Wastrel's Ruin. It Wastrel's Ruin is my skill that does crap tons of damage it does insane amounts of damage but they have to be stunned basically or not using a skill and so basically the way that you counter that it's super powerful but there is a counter okay so the the way that you counter it is basically that you bring stun breaks or you bring stability or something like that and if you're always using skills and if you if you can break out of the stun and 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 run away or something like that you could very easily counter wasteful ruin and so, you know, in that respect, you, you've got to really, it takes a lot of skill, actually, to, to, to perfectly time disrupting stab that leads right into Wastrel's Ruin. Um, and then if you use, like, a longer CC skill, like, for example, Bull's Charge, right? If I, was, if I were to use Bull's Charge, then, yeah, that's a three-second knockdown, but there's, there's a huge, like, there's a huge tell and you can you can easily see when a warrior's bull's charging, and uh, and you could just evade it, and it's you know it's that simple. You just evade it if if you can see it, and that's it. Even if even if the warrior is point blank, many times it will not hit you immediately. It will actually go for like a full second, or sometimes maybe a little bit less than a second before it hits you so that you actually have enough time to react, which is good. That's, uh, you know, again, Bull's Charge is a really powerful skill, and, and a really powerful stuff is okay. You just need to be able to counter it. So there is that. Also, why does... Oh, yeah, I was, I was thinking, why is this stability? I looked at this stability at 6 and a fourth second. I'm like, I thought it was just 6 seconds. But I remember that I'm actually eating one of these Dragon's Revelry Star Cakes here, um, which, is, which is fine. You know, I got that from the Lunar New Year stuff. And as you can see, we got the first piece of legendary armor. It was actually the stream yesterday, from the from the stream yesterday. Very exciting there. Um, when it was it was recorded with Hadi the Edge Master and Dizzy Doom, which is a good friend of mine. Um, and uh, that was a really exciting stream. We basically just went over all the patch notes and everything, and talked about what this meant for certain classes, and. Uh, and in particular, you know, uh, with the with the warrior, um, I, I was able to offer a lot of a lot of insight on the warrior because I'm a warrior man. So is Hadi the Edge Master. So, uh, you know, both of us were really able to talk a lot about warrior, and uh, it was a good time. It was a really fun time. Um, 
So, um, I, I'm kind of wondering in the chat if you could just tell me, you know, like, where are you from? Where are you, where are you watching from? Uh, I generally get viewers from all around the world. Only, even though I'm from the United States, what's kind of interesting to me is that, uh, is that only like 29% of my viewers are actually from the United States. And, and that was, that was really surprising because I thought it would be more. But actually about 22% of my viewers are from South Korea which is where I'm living now, so that makes sense. Um, and then I've got like 12% viewers from the Netherlands, and I've got some from Germany and uh, the Czech Republic and things like that, and and it's and it's it's really cool to me finding out where you guys watch from, because um, it's it's like my, my, my stuff is reaching you worldwide, and uh, you know, that's really interesting to me. Um, something that I was just really excited about with the Warrior Balance Patch, or the warrior section of the balance patch is that axe got buffed again only in pve not pvp but axe did get buffed again um something that was a little surprising it was a little like uh like why did they do this uh, was they buffed greatsword and it's always welcome right greatsword buffs are always welcome because i really do think that greatsword could use a little bit more of a buff uh, but Greatsword auto attacks, the second and third auto attack have been buffed. Um, so it basically does more damage the more you attack. And 100 Blades has been buffed by 10% in PvE only for all strikes. Uh, so that's that's kind of an interesting buff that I did not expect really at all. Uh, but it's there, and and of course I used to I used to 100% of the time run Greatsword Longbow, and that was uh, that was like my build. And I think that was a lot of warriors builds. A lot of warriors would run greatsword longbow, and it was just a really fun build. But it's just, it's not that great anymore, you know. So, uh, you know, it, there's that. And uh, somebody messaged me on Kakalsak. I gotta send that, send that link. I gotta share my link. And um, and you know, great greatsword buffs are always a, th a good thing. Um, what basically, I don't know. I mean, I used to just use. Sometimes Greatsword Hammer, that was fun as well, and, and Hammer is more powerful, of course, because of Spellbreaker, you know, because Dazes, Stuns, Pulls, Knockdowns, Knockbacks, and Launches all remove boons, so any amount of CC that you have, um, you know, there, it's going gonna, it's gonna to remove a boon, and Hammer, of course, has three hard CCs on it, so... Uh, staggering Blow, we got Backbreaker and Earthshaker are all hard CC and they all remove boons. So that is so, so cool. Um, you know, it's just it's just definitely something to keep in mind. Just definitely something that uh, is... It, it's, it's buffed, okay? So Hammer has been buffed. And now they buffed Greatsword. And, you know, Greatsword has got its utility as well. Greatsword is at a point where... Uh, where's Sunrise here? Greatsword is at a point, you know, Greatsword 5, which is rough, you can, uh, sorry, rough, rush, uh, you can rush forward, you go really, really fast, and you go for a long way, so you can always, like, catch up to enemies or whatever, uh, and, and you, um, you know, you catch up to enemies that are running away, or potentially, you, if you turn off auto-targeting, <laughs> which I don't, but if you turn off auto-targeting, then you can actually run away from enemies that are trying to chase you, uh, and you don't even need swiftness. So there you go. I mean, they added a little bit of that with, you know, with the Featherfoot Grace. Uh, if, you, if you use Featherfoot Grace in, in World v. World and everything, which is not generally the best idea, but you could, uh, you get super speed, and of course, if you use Dagger 5, it does give you 5 seconds of swiftness, so you could potentially use that. Uh, however, uh, Greatsword 5 will always be the king of running away or charging into a battle when it comes to movement skills. Uh, generally, Greatsword is the mobility weapon for Warrior, you know. Um, you know, you've got different purposes for all the weapons, right? You got longbow is your condi ranged weapon, rifle is your power ranged weapon. Um, you got mace is like vulnerability and CC, a little bit of CC, right? Uh, it's actually as much CC as hammer, honestly. It's just, uh, it's just that this is like a knockdown, and instead of a knockback, instead of an AOE knockback, you just get a daze, and then you've got skull crack, which is the adrenal skill. 
uh, but it's less mobility, right? Hammer has a, a tiny bit of mobility with uh, with a, with the F1 with the Earthshaker, because you can actually aim that. It's like it's sort of like a leap skill. Um, so there's that. Uh, what do the other weapons do? You've got axes, just pure damage. There's no mobility except on um, on Eviscerate, which is the burst skill for axe. It will just leap towards your target, you know, and that's what it does. Um, You've got sword. Sword is like the the uh, core warrior Condi weapon, right? I don't even know what offhand sword is supposed to be, honestly. I've, I'm just like it feels like it has. It feels like it's just not very good. Um, I, perhaps I could make a build with offhand sword. Perhaps I could make like a hybrid build. Um, you know, maybe you could make a spellbreaker with grieving stuff, which I I I almost hesitate to say because I'm just like that that doesn't sound very good. Um, but, you know, perhaps you could make a Spellbreaker with Grieving, and you could, uh, you could give it, um, you could give it Offhand Sword, you know, Dagger Sword or something like that, and that way you get Sun and Moon Style, right? You get, you get some benefit out of Sun and Moon Style. Or perhaps you could switch them around, and you could do Sword and Dagger, and that way you get a little bit of healing, as well as, uh, Bladestorm, and of course, Ra Wastrel's Ruin. The problem is... S the sword burst skill flurry kind of sucks. It's kind of a horrible skill, and uh, you know you don't really want to watch or you don't really want to use that. Um, but you know I, it's just something you got to keep in mind is is that it may be possible, but um, you know impale. It's and torment. Where you're getting torment? Why? Why does it get? Why? I don't understand. Um, or repost. Um, repost is just a block, you know. It's and then of course it does it it does inflict uh, bleeding. I don't know. I, I maybe maybe I would like to see buffs for some for offhand sword. That could be cool, um, you know. But but definitely all the weapons have their purpose, right? Um, you know, torch. Okay, there you go. You got a few more here. Um, torch is the uh, condition weapon, right? If you want to play a Condi build, you've got to run torch and berserker. Uh, Warhorn is the support weapon. If you're trying to run support as a warrior, you gotta have freaking uh, Warhorn. Um, if you want it to be a support build. And then Shield, of course, is the defensive offhand. You've got some hard CC, right? If you're preventing, if you're preventing an enemy from attacking, that's defensive, okay? If you inflict weakness on an enemy, that's defensive. Because that's reducing the damage of the enemy, and that's that's making it so that you take less damage, and uh, you know, so that's that's just something that that just happens, you know, um, you know, and then of course shield stance, right? Honestly, I think they should make shield stance an actual stance, and then when you run last stand, it makes your stances last longer. So instead of three seconds, it would be uh, three and three fourths seconds. Right, almost an extra full second of shield stance if you're running last stand, that could be cool. It's called shield stance for heaven's sake, right? Just give it, just give it the actual status of being a stance skill, please. I mean, that could be cool. I don't know if it would be OP. I really hope it would not be OP, but I don't know. Um, also, I didn't realize these things stack duration up to two hours. In order to get the two hours, you would have to do what? Um, 12, 12 for one hour, so you would need 24 for two hours. Not bad. Not bad at all. Got a bunch of these, uh, you know, firecrackers and everything. They only do for five minutes each, so lucky guild fireworks. That's the same thing. That's the exact same thing. But if I use one, oh, it cannot be used in World v. World. Okay, well, there you go. That settles that. I just wanted to see if it, like, flashed the guild emblem or something. Um, you might notice my helmet has changed. It's now the War Beast helmet. I was, well, actually, a little bit, like, some of my other armor pieces have changed as well. I used to be using, um, I used to be using some of the funerary armor, most of the funerary armor, actually, and we appear to have captured all of the ruins. I'm gonna waypoint back and see if I can capture the supply camp. But I used to be using a lot of the funerary armor with the, uh, the mask and the, uh, not the pauldrons, actually. The pauldrons have always been the spellbreaker stuff. Spell, spell, spellbreaker's readout is what it's called. And, um, 
And then for the breastplate, it was the funerary breastplate. And then for the legs, it was actually the Armageddon, um, which is a good, it's a good thing, right? Is it, the, the Armageddon legs are, uh, they look pretty cool. Um, but the funerary legs do not look good, just in my opinion. That's just definitely my opinion, but that's, I, I just can't help it. I just don't like them. I hate them. Um, and then for the, for the boots, we were also using funerary. So, but that has changed. I changed um, the thing basically since I got the legendary breastplate. And basically since if I want to change the skin, um, I'm going to have to switch away from having like six different outfits. Um, and then start moving my way toward a more unified outfit, which is, you know, with the War Beast breastplate, basically my main one that I used in PvE. I'm going to start moving closer to that. And the main one that I use in PvE uh, is basically, I'm going to wait for this uh, timer here, it's got two minutes, but the um, main one I use in PvE is um, with the Mist Scrim. Okay, I use that. I'm not going to do all the colors here. I got the. Uh, Sometimes the Spellbreakers Redoubt, sometimes I just use the Warbeast Pauldrons, because those are really cool. Warbeast Breastplate, and then for the gloves, I'm using Funerary right now, but uh, before, like, usually I use the Spear Marshals, because I think that looks cool. And then the Warbeast uh, Tassets, and then the Heritage. Gumshin Sejin, yes, hello Sejin, welcome back to the stream. And then of course I use the Heritage War Boots for the boots. Uh, because I think those are really a good skin. Also, what's good in the hood? Not much. Thank you for asking. How are you? Hope you're doing, uh, hope you're having a great morning. Hope you're having a great day. Uh, but yeah, I like, I like the Heritage War Boots, and of course, since I have access to the Heritage War Boots, they never cost transmutation charges, so that is always good. Um, and I love, by the way, I love rune swapping on the legendary armor. It works so well. It's just you put you put the rune in the armor and it just swaps it out. That's it. It's it's pretty nice. Like I just tried putting, um, you know, when I put watch this major. No, that's a sigil. Okay, I can't actually test it out until I go to a bank. But I'm not gonna go all the way to the bank. I tried it basically when I went. I was using my PVE stuff where I had the the rune of what was it i had the rune of something um i oh my gosh i can't i can't remember it i think it was the rune of the scholar okay and scholar runes and then i just uh double click the rune of holbrick and then i just put it into the legendary breastplate and it just swaps it out it just like it's just like it doesn't even give you a warning hey get destroyed or anything it's just pure rune swapping, and it's just so cool. Rune of boom, nothing. <laughs> well, I'm thankful that it's not that. That is definitely a meme on this channel. Um, <laughs> but, okay, so we're capturing this supply camp now, and it's actually one of the dailies, um, which is awesome. So we're actually going to complete one of the dailies here, which means we're going to uh, have two of them that are actually complete. So... But yeah, I think uh, I think we're really gonna bypass the the what few spellbreaker nerfs there were. There were a few spellbreaker nerfs, but uh, but nothing really huge, and it doesn't really affect us, right? Uh, no dagger nerfs, and we're using dagger, right? And all the trait nerfs are stuff that we can deal with, right? The trait nerfs were um, uh, loss aversion, which it now does only 130 damage instead of like 100. And 80 or something like that and then and then the uh the winds of disenchantment skill which we don't even use we don't even use winds of disenchantment so it doesn't make a difference uh we also get a new thing from the reward track we're getting quite close look at this mordrum reward track or sorry mordrum guard cache and uh, if you're not familiar with this stream i wait until the end of the stream to unlock all the loot boxes so uh stay tuned if you want to see that we're almost to the end of the reward track. That's the bladed glove box. At that point, then we can possibly work on the Auric Basin, I believe. Let's check this out. Auric Basin, you gotta complete the Verdant Brink. So as soon as you do that, then uh, you can complete the Auric Basin. And the Auric Weapons, I think, are gonna be really cool. I really want to check out those Auric Weapons and see. Um, and al also an Exotic Weapon Core Recipe. Um, I'm not exactly sure... Uh, how much I really want that one, but 
it does give you lumps of beryllium, of aurelium, not beryllium, and uh, so lumps of so lumps of aurelium are always good uh, because lately I have not done the Terrier meta very often. I I used to do it all the time, right? And then um, and now I started playing World v World. I started doing all the fractals every day and everything, and I kind of stopped. I kind of fell out of playing the Terrier meta every day like I used to. And so, you know, eventually my my Aurelium stocks are going to dwindle down. I've got 1,945 right now, but, uh, but I was at like 2,300 uh, back when I started using this uh, the Lay Energy Matter Converter every day. And I did use that today, by the way. And uh, just a heads up for today, there is a large bag of obsidian that you can get from Leyline Crystals. So I definitely got that. The uh, the obsidian is also is always a nice thing to get from the uh, from the lay energy matter converter, so there's that. Um, I could kill that veteran creature, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, and just glide down here. We're going to see if we can capture the ruins. Except we still hold all of them, which is kind of interesting to me that we're still outnumbered and yet we hold all the ruins. Some some other people are working on the uh, on the ruins here. So that's really interesting. Uh, I'm gonna ask again. I wonder uh, where are you guys watching from. Go ahead and let me know in the chat if you uh, if you would like. I'd love to know where you guys are watching from. And um, man, the stream yesterday. I've got to say that was really fun. Hadi the Edge Master just had some really good thoughts, um, really interesting contributions, and, and a good perspective from a very experienced warrior. And uh, Sejin says she's from Venezuela which is becoming another meme on my channel, but you're definitely not from Venezuela. Here's a Scourge. All right, let's see how the Scourge fares against me. Okay, okay, what is this? What is this red? Boom, backbreaker. I was able to actually take down the Scourge. I was able to take him down. Boom, heal. Boom, stop. Yeah, okay, stop. Okay, stop. I don't I don't like you doing this. Just die. Thank you. So definitely Scourge has been nerfed, and I was able to take him down, which is awesome. Yeah, Sejin is from Korea. That's what she said in the uh, in the chat. Definitely from Korea. So if any if anybody else is watching from Korea, feel free to let me know of that. Um here we go, we got this. Got some very interesting stuff. Just uh, just minor sigils, you know, junk items, things like that. Uh, we actually get to put these spikes over here. We always end up getting a lot of spikes, and I'm not really sure why. I think I think it's just a thing, right? I think it's just a thing in World v. World um, that you just get a lot of them, right? And uh, Trash Collector, by the way, this was kind of a fun achievement. Um... And this is not going to be a fun achievement because it's not going to actually be an achievement at all. What is this? What is going on here? What is going on with that uh, that pulsing red? I'm not used to that. Oh yeah, look at that. They've got that, uh, they've got a lot more tells. It's a two v one though. It's gonna, gonna die. It's not gonna happen. Uh, even though Scourge has been nerfed, right? It's not going to happen, me killing two people at once. But still, I've got to say, I think we are able to circumvent the Spellbreaker nerfs. So that is good. Uh, just a couple of nerfs that were, were there. And, you know, Warrior got a lot of buffs as well, honestly. They've got... Um, a sl basically, our, our, our build only got a slight buff in, in PvP... Or, sorry, World v. World... Our warrior got a slight buff, not too big, but it's only a 3% damage buff in World v. World, but it's something, right? And uh, it doesn't need to be everything, just needs to be something. And right now, I don't know if you guys noticed, we are actually currently running uh, like a more of a full counter build. I wanted to try this. I haven't, um, I haven't run it very often. Um, I or I sorry I haven't I haven't run it very much. There's not a, there hasn't hasn't been many times that I've actually run uh, a full counter build. I was usually running uh, a more damage build. I would use a like pure strike, which does more critical damage, and then I would run Mage Bane Tether. 
Um, and then for a while, I was also running Enchantment Collapse. I decided to kind of switch away from that, just try to just kind of try and switch away a little bit from the boon removal and start working toward uh, some other stuff. Uh, and basically, we can really buff out this full counter if we if if we actually traded properly for it. I'm using Sun and Moon style just because I'm using daggers. But if I was using if I were using hammer and uh, great sword, then that would be something. Um, change so that now you have half second interval before the cast of Scourge F skills, so that you know what and when to dodge. Also, these red rings serve the same purpose. Oh yes, that's true. Yes, they added the tells to the Scourge, which are really, really good, because it, it allows me to actually react, right? Otherwise, I can't. Um, you know, when they had b you basically insta-cast or whatever, and there's, there was no visual noise at all. Um, you know, visual noise is a problem, but when there's nothing and you have no time to react, that is a problem, and that was one of the... the, the that was really the Scourge of the game, really. <laughs> um... I'll stop making bad puns. Maybe. I'm a actually I probably I probably won't, but you know, feels good to say, right? Um But yeah, that's uh that, that's that's definitely something that they that they did that was really good. Um basically my my thought is that something can be powerful, okay? There's nothing wrong with something being really powerful, but it needs to have some kind of counterplay, right? I need to be able to either interrupt it or I need to be able to uh, see it fast enough to react to it. Also, Red Red actually beat us to this. I think this is Jade Quarry. Is that right, Jade Quarry? Hurts, yes. Doesn't it? Oh crap! Let's. That's that's the wrong neighborhood right there. Let's get out of here. Hold on. Wow, it's dropping my frames. Look at that. I'm like down to 20 frames per second because of this. Because of that Zerg over there. That was insane. That was a little terrifying, TBH. Um, gotta get out of there. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and over, go ahead and head over to these ruins because that's uh, something nice. They also nerfed a lot of the support that the Firebrand can bring. Um, I noticed that they took Aegis off of the the um, the protection tome. They took they took that off of the first skill, chapter one or whatever it's called. Musen Tishingayo. Um. Uh, for those of you that don't speak Korean, she just asked, what does this mean? And, uh, basically, Scourge was a class that was able to spam a lot of conditions. Conditions are like damage over time. Uh, rather than just a, a huge chunk of damage, the conditions just, uh, slowly tick you down. But Scourge was able to burst a lot of conditions on you at one time. And, um, and so they were able to do more damage, but super fast. And there was no a there's no way to react to it, um, and so basically what they did is they added a, a, a new ability or some new things features behind those skills where you can now react to them. Also, um, I really should have been mo using Mage Bane Tether for this, but I'm not. Oh no 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 no! Come on! Oh, come on! Boom! No stop! No stop! I've got to do this. Okay, where is he? He's, oh, he's stealth. He's gonna get away. Can I can I do this? Can I leap? I, this is not a very far leap, but no, I'm too I'm too uh, I'm too far away. He's getting away. I can't kill him. He's just, he's just running away. But you know what? You know what made me so happy about that is that I actually no, I'm not dying. <laughs> I'm not gonna die. I'm not gonna be too greedy this time. What well, what made me so happy about this? Oh 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 oh! Is that um, is that I was actually able to counter it, right? I was able to say, okay, now I am gonna die. <laughs> uh, what is this? We got two guys. We got the scourge and we got the mirage that just came back. Um, but there was counterplay, right? In the past, I had encountered mirages and there was nothing I could do. Basically, if I encountered a mirage, it was just death. It was just instant deletion. And my joke was that uh, the best counterplay to a Mirage is just to bring five other people, right? Because they're just so powerful and they just warp all around the place, all over the place, all these clones everywhere. I don't know technically what the word for them is, clones or phantasms or whatever they, whatever they are. I don't play Mesmer. But 
just all of these different clones around them all attacking you at once you didn't even know which one was the right one because they broke your targeting but the real one was doing so much damage to you and you just couldn't fight it at all but this time i encountered a mirage and <clears throat> i could actually counter it i could actually fight him to the point where he's trying to run away and yes it might be a really difficult thing to do right it might be very very difficult to counter mirage but it needs to just be possible, right? It doesn't need to be easy. It just needs to be possible. And also, I'm going to die again. Drink. Yes, I, I'm going to drink. My throat is, is rather dry. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Full counter. I'm going to... I'm definitely going to die. There's so many... According to some Revit, Reddit posts, it seems that Spellbreaker is kind of back to PvE meta. Oh, nice. It was Axe and Dagger Dagger... Oh, no, Axe Dagger and Dagger Axe setup. That sounds like it could work, um, especially because Spellbreaker, they're trying to bring Spellbreaker into the, like, the power build. Like, they want Spellbreaker to be the power spec. Like, if you want to play power build, you go with Spellbreaker. And, um, and yeah, I could totally see that, right? Um, I'm actually going to switch back to Mage Bane Tether and Pure Strike. Because... Um, yeah, no, that sounds really interesting because you've got uh, you've got Wasteful's Ruin. Uh, here's the thing, though. I think I would probably prefer to have double daggers. Um, I think I would prefer to have double daggers on a Spellbreaker power build. And, and just, you know, you, maybe you sacrifice a little bit of the damage. Uh, but you've got the Disrupting Stab right into Wasteful's Ruin. And they did this for a reason. They, they, they purposefully... Uh, or purposely, on purpose, <laughs> they they put uh, dagger skill three and dagger skill four. Of course, they are synergetic. They're highly synergetic with one another. But you need to run dual daggers in order to achieve that synergy. And I and I know exactly why they did that. Whereas if you run axe dagger, then you've got um, you you've got wastrel's ruin, but you have no CC. So you need to take some kind of CC in your utilities. If you, or perhaps, you know, if you full counter. Full counter is a half second daze, so perhaps you could do that into Wastel's Ruin. Um, but then, oh, let, yeah, let's let's not be involved in that. That's that's kind of a Zerg v Zerg right there. I'm gonna, <laughs> can I sneak by? I don't think I can sneak by that. I think I'm just gonna go the other way. But then if you've got Dagger Axe, then you do have Disrupting Stab, and you do have the one and a half second stun, provided they're using a skill. But then you don't have Wastrel's Ruin, so you've just you've got Dual Strike and you've got Whirling Axe, which, don't get me wrong, are good skills, but uh, but they don't actually benefit from that little bit of CC. So, you know, is Dagger Axe good for boon removal? Absolutely, it's amazing for boon removal, uh, and it also does quite a bit of damage. But I think that um, I think that. If you want to have a good mix, then I think Dagger Dagger is a pretty good setup to use. Um, and I think it's definitely worth that little sacrifice of damage that you would take by uh, uh, by running Dagger Dagger. Uh, a, a build that I, I love to run personally in PvE is I love to take dual axes. And I actually recorded a build video about this. It's going to come up uh, probably on Sunday. Uh, Sunday morning for me, which is going to be Sunday or sorry, Saturday evening for uh, those of you in North America. And uh, it's basically my updated dual axis build. A um, lot of people saw my dual axis build. I think a lot of people like that build. Absolutely amazing and fun build to run, but I, I think it actually got more powerful. And um, especially with the changes to banners as well. Oh yeah, that was a fun build to run. And I'm getting insane amounts of damage just in regular open world PvE. Definitely gonna have to try it in fractals as well, because um, I, I ran the dual axes build with with uh, the original one and tier four fractals, and that that did really well for me. So um, definitely gonna have to to try the new one in tier four fractals as well. And of course, and the new one takes a banner, right? The new one takes banner of discipline. I've got a whole playlist on, on warrior builds, by the way, if you guys want to see that. Um, after the stream, not right now. <laughs> um, and uh, you, when you take a banner, of course, people kind of appreciate that more because they're getting they're getting a benefit out of you as well. Warrior plays really, really good support, and you're kind of playing on that. 
and and people appreciate it when you take the banner. So it, it, it definitely kind of like helps out a little bit more than the, the previous one. The previous one was very selfish, which there is nothing wrong with a selfish warrior build, um, provided that you can actually put the damage out, you know what I mean? And um, so, so that damage was high on the old one, but even higher on this one, and then you can also bring the support and with the trait to brand. With the trait to banners, the, the the new banner trait, it's insane, okay? Look at this. Banner effect improvement, inspiring battle uh, standard. You've got banners also grant regeneration to allies and unique banner buffs applied to you are stronger, 50% stronger. What that means is that instead of just getting a buff of 170, you're getting a buff of 255. And I've done I've done the math on this with the changes they made to Banner of Tactics, and it and it buffs Banner of Tactics quite a bit by fifty percent actually when you have the trait, and uh, and so by the way that was the next diamond chest so we did get that, um, and holy crap I mean basically when you take Banner of Discipline it increases your precision to the point where you're getting an extra like 13% crit chance in addition to the 255 extra ferocity, right, that you're getting. So I, you're able to very easily with dual access because of the fury you get, you very, very easily you can maintain almost permanent fury and almost permanent 100% crit chance. It's just absolutely insane. And uh, definitely, Power Warrior did get a huge buff if you can if you can get the rotation right, and of course you can stack the the bonuses of Berserker's Power, which is going to increase your damage again by up to 21%. You got your Kick, which is going to increase your damage uh, from peak performance. You get, it's going to increase your damage by 33% flat. Insane. Run Pure Pure Strike on Spellbreaker. Then you've got Mage Bane Tether, which again. <laughs> That's been buffed in PvE, so uh, your target takes 10% more damage while they've got the Mage Bane Tether on them, which you can maintain two-thirds of the time. So, it's just, it's Power Warrior, and, and in particular Power Spellbreaker, got an insane buff. Um, so that is that is insanely good. Um, another build that I loved to run was the Dolyak Spellbreaker build. And uh, if you guys don't know what that is, I have a video on it on my on my Warrior uh, Builds playlist, and uh, it it talks about that in in more detail. It's basically where you use all soldiers' gear, uh, which is power, toughness, vitality, and you got like no critical hits, right? But you're super tanky. Opa, way. <laughs> um, you super tanky, right? You got you got like rousing resilience, which I think that's what it's called, rousing resilience. Break out of a stun. Um, oh, you're telling me to drink. Yes. You break out of a stun, you get a thousand extra toughness. And you've already got a crap ton of toughness uh, from your gear and everything. And I have actually run tier 4 fractals, and you're basically unkillable. You, you're just you're just the ultimate tank with the Dolly X Spellbreaker build. You use Might Makes Right, and you use... Um, uh, Mage Bane Tether, right? So you slap on a Mage Bane Tether with your mace, because you use a mace shield, and uh, and you slap on a Mage Bane Tether, and that's giving you an extra, however much uh, you get from from Might Makes Right, but times three, every second for eight seconds, right? <laughs> so so uh, you're doing that. You run Healing Signet. You got Runes of the Dolyak, which increase your health and vitality. Or sorry, health and toughness, and then also the the last effect is that you regenerate health over time, and you end up you end up getting to the point with with adrenal health as well. You end up getting to the point where you're regenerating like over like almost like fourteen hundred health per second, and which which you can maintain with reasonable uptime. And so there's also the blocks, right? You do your shield stance whenever the enemy is about to put out a bunch of attacks at once. You block a whole bunch of attacks, which then gives you might from the trait, and the might is going to heal you as well. And 
and because of that then the the skill is only on a 20 second cooldown instead of 25 seconds it's just absolutely insane okay it's it is just insanely survivable um and and it's just it's one of my favorite builds to run honestly i think spellbreaker does that really really well even i was able to solo heart of thorns champions using that um using that build very very fun build to use and let me just uh share the link with somebody else again okay okay so we are capturing the supply camp um let me see what are some other fun builds to use a lot of people like my blade dancer build i wasn't actually a huge fan of that build i just came up with an idea for it uh, i think it uses dual swords actually um or i think it uses dual swords like dual daggers and then dual swords something like that you run you run arms and uh arms is generally a condition damage trait line but i tried to make it work i did my best with the signet mastery and things like that and uh, it worked out okay blade dancer yes okay so oh look at this okay so reward track unlock we unlock the auric base and stuff we got the bladed glove box so definitely stick around for the end of the stream it's gonna be probably another hour and then uh when when that happens then we will uh, definitely check out these loot boxes so let's go to the auric basin reward track we're working on that one next and um and I was able to use Signet Master. Signet Master is pretty good for power builds, honestly, but I don't think Arms really offers enough stuff uh, in order to make, uh, like, enough power stuff in order to make it really optimal for a power build. It's got some stuff with nods to power builds and everything, but honestly, I, I don't really think it's useful unless you're going for a hybrid build. If you're just going for a pure power build, like I love to play, then arms honestly is not that great um because like for example like if you run arms uh then let me just, <laughs> let me just switch right really quick i hope nobody sneaks up on me you can get this signet mastery here but then uh and then you got dual wielding okay dual wielding is really good but then you've got look at this condition damage when you have fury well i mean okay so you get fury right fury is good burst skills grant fury but you're, this is completely useless to you if you're running a power build. Another th another thing is you have a chance to inflict bleeding on critical hits, and the bleeds last longer, but if you've got no extra condition damage on top of that, then the bleeds are really useless. They really are not that good. And so, so you know, you, you just got to keep that in mind, that it's, it's really only useful if you've got a power build. If you're running, like, sinister stuff, power precision and condition damage... Um, or uh, Rampagers, I believe, is like main stat precision and then power and condition damage. Uh, perhaps Grieving, right? You're running Grieving stats and you you want to run... I don't even know if it would work with Spellbreaker, honestly. Uh, you might want to just run a Core Warrior hybrid build. Uh, but but perhaps, you know, you never know. It, it you, you could maybe make a Spellbreaker that, uh, that, that focuses on more on conditions. But... Um, let me see. It's it's mostly a power thing, right? Um, perhaps you could do revenge counter, uh, and then you could do the slow counter, right? Slow counter would be good for conditions because it's cripple and slow, right? And if you've got a lot of extra condition duration, perhaps I don't know vipers. Vipers, I really don't know about running that. So mainly, you would really want to run berserker. But you know, you could potentially if you had a lot of expertise in your build. Just uh, in general, right? In general, you probably wouldn't want to run arms with a power build. Um, and, and Spellbreaker really just doesn't work very well with with conditions and stuff like that. I've tried. Believe me, I've tried, tried to run a Spellbreaker that just focuses on conditions and it just doesn't work. It's just not something that you can really make good use out of. Basically, you're removing boons, right? Okay. Uh, so that's something you specialize in, and this is ferocity and power. And if you're using ferocity, it doesn't provide any bonus to crit chance, only critical hit damage. So hold on, I'm gonna put my uh, my phone on the charger. So because it it offers no bonus to critical chance, um, you're basically getting no use out of it, or very very little use out of it, unless you have a lot of precision in your build. If you've got 
precision in your build and you can actually increase the chance to critical hit, then you can make use out of it. But even then, if you're running a hybrid build or something, then you're not going to have as much precision as if you're running an assassin's full power build, which is what I'm running. Um, you know, just something to definitely keep in mind. Something that I was also thinking about doing is uh, potentially changing the runes on this build because probably changing it to runes of the eagle potentially um, because or potentially runes of the spellbreaker. I think those are power and precision. Um, I think I think runes of the eagle are, is like precision and ferocity. I can't really remember. I should look it up. But the reason being that uh, now I don't have to worry too—I don't have to worry quite as much about conditions being spammed on me all the time. And and the main reason that I was using runes of Holbrick is um, is that it reduced the condition duration on you. Runes of the Spellbreaker are power and precision, I believe. Let me see, runes of the Eagle. The runes of the Spellbreaker are very expensive. Runes of the Eagle are. Uh, precision and ferocity. So potentially you would want to go with precision and ferocity because uh, whole brick runes only offer power and then like might duration and stuff. And uh, and they do give you a bonus, uh, a damage bonus. You know when you get uh, targets with less than fifty percent health, it's just it's definitely something you want to keep in mind. You know, rune of boom, nothing, five hundred G. Yeah, yeah, no, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> We've got this meme. If you don't know, uh, we got this meme on my channel where there's this this one one time I waited until the end to open all the loot boxes, and uh, I had like a ton of these Miss Warp packets, and I just used all. I just right click and just click use all, and there was nothing useful. It was just all just crap, and I just went and boom, nothing, and that's where that comes from. So uh oh, Mirage, here we go. All right, you want to do this? Let's go. Let's freaking go. I'm ready for you now. Boom. Can I interrupt? Oh, that was a clone. Crap. What is this? What's this over here? That was insane. I don't even know what that was. I've never seen that before. Get out of here. Stop it. Stop it. Can I do staggering blow? No, no. They're still they're still killing me. Okay, hold on. Bulls. Oh, it's not bulls charge. It's, uh, it's just charge. Just some kind of charge skill. Boom. That's a clone. He's down. He's down. Oh, crap. Charge, interrupt. Oh, crap. Did I kill him? I killed him. That was awesome. That was freaking awesome. I can't believe I killed him. So, holy crap. Killed a Mirage. Not something that we, we used to see all the time because Mirages used to be Cancer. And they're no longer Cancer. Clapping. Thank you. Um... Yeah, Mirages are no longer Cancer. They, he definitely had me worried for a second, right? It, it definitely felt like a fair fight. Definitely felt like I was not just face-rolling him, that I was actually having to fight him. And uh, that's, what, that's what it should feel like. It should feel like, you know, you've got to use every tool at your disposal, but you've got the tools, right? It should not feel like, oh, you just, uh, you know, you just, just press some keys and they just die. Um, it should definitely feel... Charanda, thank you. If you don't speak Korean, Charanda means you're doing well. So yeah, thank you very much. Um, and and I've heard that Scourge used to be like that. I've heard that Scourge used to be where you could just face roll people and just uh, just kind of press the keys on your keyboard and then people just die. They just get deleted. Um, you know, basically uninstalls their game just because you <laughs> just because you're pressing certain skill keys, F2, F3, whatever. Um, but uh, but no more, no more. Now there's finally some counterplay, and so you know. And and to be honest, when Spellbreaker first came out, honestly, it was a little too powerful. Um, I think it has been uh, been a little bit over nerfed. I will say that a little bit over nerfed with the full counter thing. They basically they reduced they reduced the damage by like uh, a quarter. A while ago and they also increased the cooldown to 12 seconds without discipline I think that if you're going to to choose one of those nerfs I don't think you should choose the other right if you're gonna increase the cooldown make it deal the same amount of damage and if you're going to uh, reduce the damage then let me use it as often as before 
I don't really think it needed both of those things. But that's just my opinion. Um, you know, I just, just that's just what I think. Also, uh, something that I'm going to try, actually. I'm going to try this. I'm not exactly sure if this will be a good decision, but we will see. Is uh, You know, I always experiment with builds all the time, and that's why I've got so many builds on my on my channel. That's why i got that huge playlist full of, uh, full of warrior builds. But I'm going to try, instead of running in Durpain, Sight Beyond Sight, okay? And this is going to give me some counter to uh to stealth right i've got i've got mage bane tether and that's going to give me counter to stealth but i'm also going to use sight beyond sight for some extra bit of revealed it also makes my next attack a critical hit but honestly i don't really care about that because i've got enough critical hits um and uh and we're gonna try it we're gonna see how it works and uh also probably after the next tick i'm gonna switch out my runes uh, well, first of all, I'm going to get to tier 5 participation. Also, that was a bad decision. I just, I made a bad decision, and I'm bearing the consequences of that. Um, <laughs> I think I'm going to get Runes of the Eagle now, honestly. These uh, these Runes of Holbrook are very useful, uh, but I do have the food that reduces um, incoming condition duration, so that is something very useful to me, something that is basically achieving the same thing. It's just, I think it's just, um, I think it's just stacking on top of the, the Runes of Holbrook. So... You know, that's good. Um, and, uh, okay, so, yeah, we're probably going to choose Runes of the Eagle. Let me just go ahead and buy six of those. I, I spend so much money on runes because I just I have to replace them all. Once I get... Here we go. And here's another fight. Oh, crap. I used Sight Beyond Sight, but I don't think he was actually stealth, so... Okay, full counter. Boom. Yeah, that didn't work out. I'm going to die. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Boom. Yeah, he's evading all this stuff. He won. Now see, do you see this? This is something that's really good. Something that's really good in, in working with balance is that when you encounter one of these mirages, you don't know if you're gonna be able to kill them. And that's something that they really need to, uh, to try and work toward. See, I'm on vengeance. Now he's gonna run away. Oh, no, he's not. Yeah, yeah, he is. He's just going to run away because he knows that I'm just going to die. Um, that's that's really what they need to work toward is that basically when you encounter... Whiting, thank you, but I did not win. If you encounter a Mirage, you should not be absolutely sure that they're going to face roll you and just curb stomp you. But you should also not be completely sure that you're going to be able to take them no problem. And so, you know, that's I, I think they did really well there. Uh, Rune of the Eagle. And we're just going to buy six of these. We're going to equip those to our current build. Superior Runes of the Eagle. Very cool. And we got six of them. It's only 20 silver. So that's fine. Um, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to have to do, I'm just going to start doing fractals uh, to get some more gold. Because even one day, right? In one day, one day of daily tier four fractals is going to get you like 20 gold or something like that. So that's, that's definitely something I'm, I'm going to have to do eventually. But uh, but for now, I think it's okay. We don't need, like, a ton of gold. But when we do, when we make our second piece of legendary armor, yeah, we're going to freaking need that. Um, so these are this is precision and ferocity. So we're not getting the raw power, power boost, but that is fine. And we actually, look at this. Watch, okay, I'm going to do the legendary piece last. Watch how awesome this is here. I apply the superior rune of the eagle, right? And boom, switch. That's it. It just switches. That's so cool. I just love having legendary armor. I just, that's that's such a cool benefit of it. And you can even sell the uh, sell the rune of Holbrick, which I, it's just too silver. It's not really that great, but but it's something. Okay, it's it's something. It's a tiny bit. And uh, now I got runes of the eagle. So now my crit chance is seventy eight percent. All right. So that's definitely something that's very good. Uh, I might want to switch out sight beyond sight. Uh, we might want to try... Let's try Break Enchantments, shall we? I know Break Enchantments is good. I don't know how well it works in, in World v. World, but I have... When Spellbreaker first came out, especially, I was using Break Enchantments a lot, and it just straight up removes two boons, and it does quite a bit of damage, actually. It does over a thousand damage if you remove a boon. Up to, up to five targets. So, definitely something that, that, that works well in PvE. Or sorry, P yeah, PVE sometimes and uh, PVP as well, structured PVP. 
Um, that works well. Uh, but we will see how well it works in World v. World. I know I need this resistance for Ber Berserker Stance uh, because it just gives me the resistance versus the conditions. And I've also got the Cleanse. Oh, wait a second. Oh, hold on. They're, I think they're going to go try and capture this keep. Let's follow them. Let's go over there with them. Let's see if we can follow them. Let's see if we can uh, capture this keep with them. Let's see, we're capturing this. This is Sentry. Oh, man, we got a few of those other players. Should I pop Winds of Disenchantment? I don't know. Should I? You got, uh, looks like three other players there. One of them is a Ranger. One of, okay, this is a Druid. Army. Yes, it's like an army. We're like an army. We got, we got a Core Warrior. Core Warrior's mine. I'm killing him. Die. Hang on. Actually, they're running away from us, which is fine. Wow, look at all this sand shade crap. Look at all the like, visual clutter. <laughs> like, holy crap. We got a fortified gate. Okay. Um, can we just, can I just do this? Can I just, that's just a veteran creature, right? Um, yeah, I think we're, we're pulling back a little bit, so I don't want to, I want to stay with everybody else. I don't want to, like, get separated from... Look at this. This is not even like it's not even run by a commander. It's just straight up just a group of people that just found each other and wanted to and were just like, "Hey, let's just capture this keep, right?" That is pretty cool. Also invasion defender. Oh, this is um Oh, I thought this was for defending an objective. I didn't realize this was for actually um killing other players. Okay. All right, so let's go over here. It looks like we're actually winning. It looks like we're doing quite well. Blade Storm. I don't even know who I'm going for. Let's just... Okay, this guy's mine here. Uh, uh, which guy? <laughs> which guy? Crap. Okay, that's Chronomancer. So we got the Mesmer, so he's, he's uh, kind of spamming the clones there, but definitely something that I can counter. I think. I hope. I don't even... Gosh, I don't even know where I'm going. Is that the real guy? I think, is that the real guy? I feel like that's the real guy. Boom, knockback. Yeah, that's the real, that's the actual guy there, but he broke my targeting. I'm gonna die. <laughs> Whoops. I was not paying enough attention. I'm gonna die, here we go. Here we go, ready guys, ready? Boom, dead. Yeah, you die, yes I don't. I know, I died. I got a little too greedy again. Greed killed me once again. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. You know why? Because we're gonna get we're gonna get back in the fight. We're gonna go back there, and I think break enchantments was probably a good skill to be running. Although in that in that situation, probably endure pain would still be better. I'm wondering maybe I should go with frenzy. What if I went frenzy? I'm gonna try that. And usually I don't run frenzy because it kind of sucks. Honestly, <laughs> it kind of sucks as a skill, but it provides us with seven and a half seconds of quick quickness so we're gonna try it i'm gonna take a drink really quick i actually came prepared with water this time i'm so happy okay very cool just a reminder if you enjoy these videos if you want to see my warrior uh build videos if you want to join me for more worldly world and chill please feel free to leave a like and subscribe usually stream for about two hours sometimes more if i don't have to work <laughs> That being said, let's just get up. Let's just get back into this fight. Um, there's a Chronomancer, but he's by himself. He's actually by himself. Boom, boom. No, die. Stop. No, just no. Could you could you please die, please? Just just die, please die. Boom. Removing boons. Stop. Disrupting stab. Boom. Hold on, hold on. Okay, okay, I got this guy. Oh crap. Hold on, like, oh, oh crap, he, he down me! No! Where? Where? Hold on. Oh crap, son, I think that's the real one. No, that's not the real one. That's the real one. Oh, somebody's healing me! Somebody's healing me! Yes! Yes, we did it! We did it! Completed the dailies. We got the transcendent chest. That is awesome. That was a close one, but we made it laughing you're laughing at me 
That's the Korean version of LOL, by the way. Okay, we're fine. We're fine. We actually made it. Meo Jimmy saw. That means, uh, in Korean, that means this is very fun. It's, it's very fun to watch, very entertaining, something like that. I'm glad. I'm so glad that it's entertaining. Also, let's not burn in the fiery pits of hell. <laughs> We're back, it appears. Uh, it appears that we have returned. And uh, let's see, can we can we take this down? We've got to definitely kill these flesh reavers here. I don't know how we're going to do this with the limited amount of people that we have, but uh, let's go ahead and try. Screw it, right? Just, uh, you know, just screw it. Full counter, boom. And boom. You won't escape. I heard my guy say you won't escape. You know what that means? That means a Mage Bane Tether has been broken. Okay, boom. I'm just auto-attacking on Hammer right here. Let's do Frenzy, Earthshaker. Boom. Full counter. Nobody triggered it. Are you kidding me? Are you actually kidding me? Well, we're killing these guys, right? We're, we're actually... We're doing a lot. Boom. Kill that guy. Dodged out of the range of that... Whatever that was. I've got a flame ram. I've got a superior flame ram. Somebody take this. Alright, I've got a couple of them that I'm, that I'm contributing here. It started out with 10. Why does it start out with 10? Not really sure why. Uh, let's go ahead and... Let's see. I think... I think we're good on... Why? Where did we go? Where did they all go? Everybody's just suddenly gone. I don't know where they went. That's fine. Okay, you know what? That's fine. Just, just leave me behind. Just, you know... Just leave me behind. Just, uh, you know, I don't even care. I don't even care. Leave me behind. Go somewhere else. I didn't want you there anyway. Honestly, just, uh, leave. Somebody went somewhere else. I just, I don't, I don't know where they went. I, they, I don't think they went to capture the shrine because, because, uh, we already have it. Right? That's already ours. It was ours, I believe. As far as I know. Um, I don't know. I have no idea. But it also appears that this supply camp is blue, which means we can just go, uh, we can go capture this, which is very cool. Always good to be able to capture a supply camp. Cannot believe we got the World v. World dailies done so fast. That was really cool. Hold on. Am I getting a chosen? Wait, let me see. Unique armor skins, Dragonite ore, Imperial fragments, Obsidian shards. Actually, this is not this is not like a normal loot box that we usually encounter. So I think I'm actually going to open this right now. Do you see this? Okay, heavy hand armor. Look at these these uh, gauntlets. That's pretty cool. So we're going to do that. We also get 15 Obsidian shards, seven Mystic clovers. Definitely something to keep in mind. We need those things. All right, we got that stuff. So. The bladed armor. Three transmutation charges. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And we don't even get that many chances. Okay, okay. Just, you know what? Screw that. That was for the skin. Okay, that was really for the skin. All right. That's the same thing. Uh, that's what what's going to happen for the, uh, the auric weapons. I'm really just going to be doing that for the skin, honestly. Let's go ahead and uh, kill this uh, pack Doliac here. Boom. Die. I feel so... Look, I, I actually feel... I start to feel bad when I'm just, like, beating up on this defenseless animal just... Just with a hammer. Like, it's just... It feels so cruel. Why? Just... Ugh. It makes me feel like a piece of crap. Okay, boom. Interrupt. Boom. We got the Mage Bane Tether going. We're gaining might. Boom, boom, boom. No problem. One shot. Two. Two. Easy. Sentry, no problem. Sentries are no longer a problem. You are. Yeah, no, no, no. Stop that! Sejin is such a savage. Seriously, Sejin. So savage. I can't even take the level of savagery. What is this? What did I get here? Boom. Oh, oh, I, oh, I ranked up. Okay. Very cool. I'm ranked uh, 46. Here's another loot box that we could do. It's and I, I consider it a loot box because the amount of testimonies of heroics that you get is uh, is not guaranteed. It ranges. It's actually in a variation. So I do wait until the end to open those ones. 
It's okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. Sejin is joking. She's a nice girl. Alright, so let's go capture the supply camp. Looks like it's still on a timer of about a minute and a half, but we can deal with that. We're okay with that. I'm just gonna just take a second just to resynchronize my um, my viewer count because I don't know why it gets out of sync. I really don't know why. It's so weird. Like for a while, it's just it's fine, okay, and and it just changes, it updates all the time or whatever. But then after a certain period of time, it just kind of like uh, just stays at that point. Not really sure why. Let's go ahead and uh, recopy the thing. I don't know if it's a problem with OBS or something like that, but uh, it could be a problem with OBS. I could, I maybe what I could do is just like set it to refresh every so often, and just uh, you know make sure that it stays synchronized. It should be good now. Let me see. Let me just check. Yeah, it should be good now. We're good, and we're waiting for this uh, timer to, to tick down. Only about 50 seconds left, which is totally fine. And, um, and yeah, so honestly, I think overall with the other classes that got nerfed, I think comparatively Warrior kind of barely got nerfed. Uh, basically Warrior got nerfed, uh, just to make sure that they're not super overpowered once the other classes got nerfed. I really think that was the main purpose. And, uh, which is fine, you know, because uh, I, I think comparatively they just, they kind of dodged a lot of stuff. What do we even get here? I don't think it really even matters. I guess just berserkers. We could just salvage it, right? We, we already got the skin, okay? So, is this... Of course, it's... I think it was the count bound when you first got it. So, I'm just going to uh, do this. Silver fed, salvage matic Boom. Globs of dark matter. Always nice to get. And let's go ahead and uh, salvage this dire rogue coat of whatever it was. And another ecto. Very cool. So, I think... Oh, yeah, the timer's gone. So, let's go ahead and take out this these guys okay boom I'm actually at tier 5 participation I think we're gonna go up to tier 6 very soon boom not quite but we're almost there so let's just wait and we'll get tier 6 pretty soon and there's a quartermaster here but I don't want to step outside of this ring so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna kind of stay here just you know just just do your thing just don't bother me and we won't have a problem that's basically the idea there now, I could, if I wanted, uh, just improve this thing where I spend six supply at a time when I am building stuff. Uh, however, I think I'm just going to save up, and I think I'm just going to get all of the war gliding stuff. It's going to take 57 ranks, right? But I think we can, I think it's going to be worth it um, to gain the war gliding things. Basically, it's going to make it so we could glide the same way we do in PvE. And, uh, oops. I brought up my friends list. And there's the guild list. What is this? What am I even doing? Okay. Uh, I just... <laughs> um, what was I saying? I don't remember. It doesn't matter. But, uh, but yeah. Oh, man. We're going to have some good loot boxes today. I can feel it. And, uh, you know, okay. So, one of the reasons... Like, people said that uh, they think that it would ruin the sigil economy if they allowed you to sigil swap on legendary weapons... I think that's complete bullcrap, because I think what they should do is just simply... Hold on, are there other people here? What they should do, in my opinion, is just basically make it so that you can salvage uh, minor and major sigils. Make it so that, like, um, when you salvage minor sigils, you get, like, tier 1 and 2 items, and when you salvage major sigils, then you get tier 3 and 4 items, and then, and then superior sigils give, like, tier 5 and 6 items. That would be so... Good. That would be such a good uh, change, and 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 such such a balancing force in the economy. I think, because I think they're worried that oh, if you could sigil swap, then that completely destroys the economy for minor major sigils or something like that. I just I don't know, but um, but definitely it creates scarcity for the sigils themselves, because then people are able to get materials from them. So you know the question is when you get a superior sigil. From a piece of gear do you sell the sigil itself or do you salvage the sigil for a chance to oh i should have gone down do you salvage the sigil for a chance to get some materials that you need um so i i, I just think that's what they should do um perhaps with runes as well but all like obviously they've tried out rune swapping with legendary armor and it has worked 
and it has not really destroyed the economy. I realize that they're they're paying attention to things in the economy, and and that's why they don't want to like be too quick to to give legendary weapons sigil swapping. But but honestly, I think they could probably bypass that if they just simply um, if they just what what is going on here? Why can't I capture this? He's vulnerable. Okay, he's vulnerable for a minute and a half. There it is. There's my reason. Uh, honestly, I think I could bypass a lot of the economic impact if they just, uh, or a lot of the negative impact if they just allow you to salvage um, sigils. I think it would really work out pretty well. Also, did I just, hold on, hold on a second. When do I gain attacker's insight? When you disable foes and you remove boons. Now, I just removed, I don't think I removed five boons. How did I get five stacks of attacker's insight? I, I honestly have no idea. I don't know how I did that. But that's fine. That's that's totally fine. Uh, just wait for this timer on the, the fire elemental to run out. It's going to be fine. We're going to be fine. Absolutely fine. By the way, in app, just want to recommend something. Not, not sponsored, of course. Um, although I wish I was. Um, but uh, there's a um, there's an app that I use for uh, just a quick question about things in other languages. It really helps because I'm learning Korean and I had a question. I actually asked, how do you say Spellbreaker in Korean? And I actually got an answer within like 10 minutes. So that was really cool. Is the app called High Native. And it allows you to ask questions to native speakers of basically any language that you're learning. And you can also answer questions about your own native language. And basically, if you answer quickly, it gives you more points. So you can actually be a like a, a better member of the community, and your answers will be taken more seriously if you've got a higher ranking because you answer quickly and everything like that. And if they're good answers, like if they actually leave a like on your answer, and it was a quick answer, then yeah. Um, let me do this. Boom. Earth Shaker. Just quickness with a hammer really helps. Boom. Veteran Ember. Let's go ahead and use uh, Rampage here. For all those CCs, right? All that hard CC. Boom. Holy crap. Just knock them right out of the air. You know what I'm saying? Holy prick. But yeah, very, very good app. I'm, I'm really happy with it, and I've been using it a lot. I also answer a lot of people's questions about English on there as well. It's Because um, it's really useful for that. And, uh, and I know that a lot of Korean people use the, the app, and I can speak some Korean, so there are times when, you know, there was a moment actually uh, this morning, somebody wanted to, to know how to say, um, you have the ability to be comfortable, something like that. Um, they wanted to be able to say that in English, um, and, or no, 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 they, they said, you have a ability to comfortable. And they were saying, you know, how does that sound? Does it sound natural or a little bit unnatural or really unnatural? And I said it sounds really unnatural, and then I corrected them, and then they then they said, okay, so you have the ability to be comfortable for me is correct. And I said, well, I don't know what you mean in that case. Can you just, I noticed that their native language is Korean. So I said, can you just tell me what you're trying to say in Korean? I actually said that in Korean. And... Um, and so they replied with the actual Korean words that they were trying to say, and I was able to help them because of the Korean that I spoke. I was able to actually help them with what they wanted to say. So also, this is a... I think we're getting a little too close to this fortified gate. Um, let's definitely get away from here. We're in the wrong neighborhood. Uh, that's on too much of a timer, I think, probably. I think we're just probably going to go back to these ruins and see if we can just uh, do some damage there. Yeah, definitely no. No, I'm not going to take down all those veterans by myself. Perhaps if I was running my Doliac Spellbreaker build. Again, uh, you know, Warrior Builds on my channel if you want to check out that playlist. Very, very cool. Um, oh, oh, yeah, because the chat. Because I, yeah, thank you <laughs> for helping that uh, Korean person. Yeah, it was, it was it's fun. It's actually go, it's fun to go on there and see, you know, what kind of questions people have about your language. And also, you can also read questions that people have about your country, right? So I'm from the United States, so when somebody has a question about the United States and they're not from there, then um, 
then I can actually go and answer their questions about the United States as well. Naval Papago, I don't know about that service from Naver. Um, is that an actual service? I don't know what you're saying. But, but I can actually go on there and uh, answer questions about my country, my language, or like I found out, I found out how to say spellbreaker in Korean, which is really cool. I think the, the word for spellbreaker in Korean is like um, Mabobur uh, Genda. So, so I, I abbreviate that to Ma Genda, and that is spellbreaker in Korean. It's very cool. It's, it's literally someone that breaks magic. Very, very cool. I love that word. If I could get uh, is Korean Google Translate but better, uh, I don't know about better. In some cases, it is definitely better. Um, but there are also some cases where Google Translate will help out more with like a single word. They will pop up. Okay, so there's a service basically that translates Korean to English and things like that. But, um, but the cool thing about Hi Native is that you're actually asking a real native speaker. And it's not just like a it's not just like an automated thing. It's like you're actually asking, okay, so everybody that speaks Korean or everybody that speaks whatever language you're trying to learn, they even have Latin. I think they also have Klingon as well. Um, everybody that speaks this language, you know, how do you say blah 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 in this language? Or you could say you could record your voice and you could say, How is my pronunciation? Is it natural or no? And how would you pronounce it? And you can actually request that people, that native speakers will show you the correct pronunciation. And so very, very useful. Um, and that's why I started using it. And I'm really, I'm really happy about that. Also, Blessing of Elements. I didn't realize that I had this bonus from capturing that fire shrine, but I'm moving 40% faster. That is insane. Okay. Um, so there you go. I guess I'm running 30% faster. I'm sorry, 40% faster. Uh, hey, one, hello. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you're having a great morning. And, um, you know, how are you today? Hope you, hope you are doing quite well. And so far, I think we're having good luck with these eagle runes. It's definitely a lot more critical hit chance. Um... 78% crit chance, you know, that's that's good. That's pretty good. I'm happy about that. 30 bonus points to precision. It's not a whole lot, right? Um, but it's something, and it increases just a little bit. Definitely, if we had some source of fury, like if we wanted to do four great justice, it would not be affected by the stances and everything, but that is eight seconds of fury, and that would bring us up to actually 98% crit chance. Hey, one says, hey, hello. <laughs> and uh wait this is five stacks of might four great justice is six stacks of might and for much longer and it's also fury but it is not a stun break right and it does not give you quickness frenzy actually gives you quick quickness and that is something i always say quickness when i do it it, it does give you quickness as well and that's why i have frenzy equipped um and the stun break you know it's it's good because i replaced endure pain and and endure pain was a stun break so why not have another stun break frenzy and it's also affected by the stance trait last stand you know it's only boons but these particular boons of uh um these particular boons applied by frenzy will last 25 percent longer so that is definitely something good and it also gives you vigor and basically you're getting so much vigor you can't even believe it you're getting 18 seconds of vigor right and that is a lot of vigor just basically where you could dodge just like there's no tomorrow is definitely something you want to work toward um just a uh just a quick quick explanation for those of you that might be new to the stream is basically what i'm doing is i uh i just chill out going to world v world we're working towards legendary armor casually i do have one piece so far um so there is that occasionally i bring on uh my friend and we do it together He's feeling quite sick today, so he couldn't come. Uh, but, you know, I like to chat chat with you guys and just relax as I work toward the legendary armor. So it's just not as much of a grind. That's basically what I, what I like to do. I'm always especially welcome people to tell me where they are from, where they are watching from. Another question I wanted to ask that I haven't asked in a while is what kind of coffee do you guys like? 
I do like to ask that question because generally people's coffee is kind of like their identity uh, and, and that is kind of unique for every person. And uh, so, you know, I like to ask that. Ukraina. What is Ukraina? I don't know what that is. I, that The meaning has escaped me. Ukraina? Ocarina? Are you trying to say Ocarina? Like Ocarina of Time? Like Legend of Zelda? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't understand. But definitely, if you guys... Oh, Ukraine! Yes, Ukraine. Okay, so now... Okay, so now Sejin is trying to tell me that she's from Ukraine. That's that's wrong. That's not, that's not at all where she's from. I know this. I actually almost had some tea recently. Almost! I ended up not having any because... Um, all I had was uh, this boy tea, and I wanted like peppermint tea or chamomile tea. That's pretty much the only tea I I, I get, and uh, I didn't want to drink boy tea, so I opted for water instead. Water is the drink of the gods. <laughs> water is so good. I just love water. I don't even know I I don't know why. It's just so refreshing right i guess it's the whole thing about you know your body is like you know sort of really high percentage water and all that stuff like what is it what is it like 99 percent water or something like <laughs> i don't know but yeah always good to prepare with a glass of water when you stream guys if you stream if you live stream definitely get a bottle of water while you do it because you're gonna wear yourself out if you do not have a bottle of water. So there is that. Another thing about this stream that probably not a, uh, not a lot of people would know is that um, is that I wait until the basically what I do is I wait until the end of the stream and then I open all the loot boxes that I that I've collected throughout the stream. So um, there's there's that. So you can look forward to that. The uh, probably the stream is going to be about 20 more minutes or so. Uh, it's usually how long I stream and um, and then I'm going to open all of them until you get to see what's in it. So, definitely be sure and stick around for that. And we're still working on these, uh, these World v. World skirmish claim tickets, which we need quite a lot of. We're down to 72 after we bought that first legendary piece of armor. That costs so much, but, but... The next ones are not going to cost as much because the breastplate was the most expensive. It cost 350 legendary, uh, sorry, uh, 350 World v. World skirmish claim tickets. The cheapest, there are four really cheap pieces, and they are uh, 175 each. So, you know, that is uh, half the amount that the breastplate costs, so very good. The leggings, I believe, are like 260, and we may go for the leggings next. Um, you know, I, I was actually, I was looking at it, and unfortunately the first piece of legendary armor did not allow me to actually save any bank space, because now I'm just taking up that same slot in my bank space, in my bank, with just a rune now. And now I just have a rune instead of the breastplate, so that kind of sucks, but, it sucks but, <laughs> but, um, when we get the second piece, then it's going to free up all those extra spaces because I have so many sets of armor, and instead I'll just be able to stack all those runes right on top of each other. So if I have like six stacks of armor, or sorry, six sets of armor, then instead of taking 36 slots in my inventory, it'll just take six slots for all the runes. And so that that's definitely something good to keep in mind. Okay, uh, so we've got, what else do we have here? We've got uh, Tilly's Encampment is where we're going next. Or can we capture... No, Supply Camp is, as, is ours. That is definitely ours. Very solidly ours. <laughs> Although, is the timer on it? Is the timer on our Supply Camp? No. So it could be captured quite soon. We'll have to see. And, uh, you know, I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about, like, when I get swiftness. I get swiftness when I use balanced stance, and I also get swiftness on, on dagger five. 
And what that's actually doing now is it's giving me a 3% damage boost because of the uh, the buff. It's a small buff in PvP, World v. World, but it's a buff nonetheless. 3% extra damage when I've got Swiftness. Also, I, I watched Wooden Potatoes videos about this, and he brought up a really good point, is that when you run Warrior Sprint, you kind of feel like Swiftness is, is kind of useless sometimes. It kind of feels useless uh, because you already have the 25% movement speed increase, but if they give you this damage bonus, then you don't feel quite so bad about taking it because now when you do have Swiftness, you're also gaining a damage buff. And the buff in PvE is 7%, so definitely not something that you need, that, that you can overlook. It's definitely something you gotta pay attention to. Especially if you're fighting a warrior with warrior sprint, uh, you know, that's definitely something you gotta keep in mind. But, honestly, they need to buff the other stuff, okay? Make crack shot, make rifle skills, and, and harpoon gun skills. Make those do like 20% more damage or something like that, to make that actually bring possibly rifle builds into play and make vengeful return something else like just make the base percentage on vengeance a hundred percent and then instead give us like 50 percent increased health when we rally or increase speed at rallying other players and stuff like that um you know or or if you rally from vengeance gain these boons or something like that that could be really really cool but don't make me trait just to make my down skill 3 useful, like mildly useful, because if you're in PvP and World v. World, they know that they just have to run away from you. And if and even if they can't run away from you, then, then you're going to kill them, and then there's only a 25% chance that you're actually going to rally from it. It's just so dumb. It's just so, so dumb. And I heard from Hadi the Edgemaster... Um, hold on. I'm from Sejin. I'm from Seattle originally. I'm from New York. Oh, you are from Texas. You're from where again? Nice to meet you. Oh, so we're here at the YouTube space. You must be a YouTuber. Uh, okay. I'm not really sure what that is. Um, is that... I, I don't, I don't know. I'm trying to guess what that is. I think I know what that means. Um... Uh, what was I even saying? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so basically, like, you, you kill somebody in Vengeance, and there's only a 25% chance that you actually... Um, that you actually um, rally from it. And so... I don't know, killing another player in, in PvP or World v. World, like, you've got to finish them as well. They go into a down state as well, and you've actually got to finish them in order to to gain just the chance of rallying. Perfect English from sight. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, you know, so so if you want to actually trait and make it so that it's 100% chance, you have to actually give up a movement speed increase and several, several uh, removals of immobilization, right? Because Dagger 2 will remove immobilization, Dagger Burst will remove immobilization, and then when you've got the Hammer, the Hammer Burst will also remove immobilization. If you've got Bull's Charge, that removes it, Stomp removes it, Kick removes it, any other movement skills I need to know about, Sword 2 skill, or Sword 2 removes it, um, anything else? Axe Burst removes it, um, Great Sword 3 and 5 remove immobilization, and anything rifle? No, nothing in rifle. And then, of course, um, charge removes immobilization from Warhorn, but that's not because of the trait. Uh, and then shield bash also does it. Hale one says, "Yeah." Oh, I'm not. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to read the cuss words. But uh, but you're very tired. She says she's very tired. So that's that's. I'm sorry to hear that. I hope you can get some more rest. Oh, am I? Is my microphone? Iran and Jim. Oh, okay, okay. So you cannot, you cannot hear me because you're working. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> so basically, she says that uh, she's working now, so she can't hear me, um, but she's watching. That's what she said in Korean. For those of you that cannot understand, some of you may be able to understand that because some of you can. Um, 
Some of you can understand Korean, some of you are Korean. But for those of you that can't, I try to explain, I try to translate. So there it is. There we go. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with the amount of pips we've gotten today. I actually, I started off the stream, basically I was almost to the second diamond reward. We are now almost to the fifth out of six diamond reward. So we're probably going to get, let me see, if we get uh, nine pips every time, it's going to take us about, uh, yeah, two more pips, which is about five, or it's actually about six more minutes, and we're actually going to be able to gain the last diamond, or sorry, the, the second to last diamond reward. Also, I don't know why we auto-attack that guy. I didn't, I didn't actually press anything. I was cracking my knuckles here. Whoops. Um, okay. So we're going to also gain a Tome of Knowledge soon. We're going to gain that. And the first thing there is the Veteran Quetzal Cache. So we will be able to gain, uh, you know, one step closer to the Auric Weapon Crate. And that that is going to be good. That's going to be great. Auric Weapon Crate. I'm really excited to get that uh, Auric Longbow. I might have to take a look at that before we end the stream. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into the bank wardrobe and take a look at those Auric Weapons gonna choose which one we will want to get because there are some really cool looking ones I already had the auric hammer but uh, but some of the other ones look quite good uh, those that's actually one of the one of the skin sets that they added that that I really think looks good that's not from the gem store surprisingly right a lot of the good skins that they add just they, they look like they're or they're from the gem store um, if they're good, they're from the gem store. If they're okay, then they're actually just in the game normally. <laughs> um, but let me see. This uh, weapon skins. I thought there was uh, one of those. Um, they are going to add a fire-breathing longbow at some point. I, I, I saw that in the data mining patch. Um, so keep an eye out for that. They're still selling the dragon mask. I wonder if they're still selling the uh, the lion mask. Are they? Let's see. I know. Oh yeah, they are. They are still selling the lion mask. So if you want to, if you want to get that lion mask, then you know you could still get that. Um, I'm personally not a fan of the lion mask. I'm a much bigger fan of the uh, of the dragon mask. I'm also thinking about getting the primeval armor skins, honestly, because just okay. I had primeval armor in. I got primeval armor for my warrior in Guild Wars One. And I don't remember exactly how I got it, but it, but it was difficult to get. I also got primary primeval armor for my dervish in Guild Wars One, and that was tough to get. Nice to meet you times four, and now with CH sound, nice to meet you times four. Meet you, meet you. Both are okay. English. I don't understand. I don't understand what you're saying, Sajid. I don't understand. Um. Okay. So. But yeah, next tick we're actually going to get the final um, final diamond or sorry, the second to final diamond reward. Uh, we're going to probably stick around for two more um, ticks. Site says like that. Who, who's which which site says like that? I've, I've never seen anything that says English like that. Um, probably going to stick around for two more ticks. Then we're going to check out these loot boxes, right? I'm I'm quite excited. We didn't get as many. Usually we get more loot boxes. Uh, in the beginning of the week, right, because we're going through wood and we're going through the, um, oh, what's it called? We're going through wood and bronze and silver and everything, and th those are much easier to get. It require far fewer pips. But, um, but we still have some good loot boxes, okay? We still, I mean, we only have the, the, the six Miss War packets, but also you say it's Rachel's English. I've never heard of Rachel's English, honestly. Um... But, you know, another thing I was, I was talking to, to Hadi the Edgemaster and, uh, and Dizzy Doom about this. What I really think they need to do is they need to fix all these missing skills with the professions, okay? Because we've got a lot of, we got a lot of, like, skills that are just not there for professions. For example, Warrior has four utility banners and we've even got an elite banner. But where's our healing banner? Why can't we have a banner that by by just normal definition, by just by the normal effect of it, it grants regeneration. Perhaps it just heals for like a thousand 
to up to five targets, right? Me make it five target. Make it a smaller amount of targets, including the warrior. Okay, five targets, including the warrior. Hey, one says, "Iragi shita." Yeah, yeah uh, basically she says she doesn't want to work. Um, you could have it like pulse healing and things like that. Says in su. Um, okay, I think she's talking to Sejin. Um, you know, but but give me some kind of healing banner. That would be really cool. Then you could have the trait that increases banner's effectiveness by 50%, and then you could make that pulsing heal around the healing banner, make it 1,500 instead. Um, that would be really cool. And Because you're changing your healing skill out, and they, there's definitely a way that you could do that. You know, make it so you could pick it up and then give other heals to to people or whatever that would be really really cool i think another thing is we don't have an elite stance right we have stances we have defiant stance that's a really cool healing skill where basically just everything um everything heals you oh rachel's english oh and how to introduce yourself okay so that's what you're talking about you got defiant stance that just everything heals you you've got a healing signet where you just heal over time um we've got uh, what's it called? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm talking about stances here. <laughs> we've got four utility stances, right? We get the resistance. Oh, we've also got death coming up in, in just a second here. Dragon Hunter, uh, boom, boom, boom. Full counter, boom. And we did get that uh, diamond reward there. We're dead. There's too many people on us at once right now. Um, we got that diamond reward. So there is that. Also, what is happening here? Okay, so let's waypoint back. But we have no elite stance, and I don't know what it would be. I don't know what the elite stance would be, but we should have something. Perhaps, um, well, let me see. We have immunity. We have, like, we've got, like, quickness and everything. Uh, we've got stability. I don't know what our elite stance. Why don't you let me know in the chat if you've got an idea of what a warrior's elite stance could look like. What could that look like? Just go ahead and let me know. Another thing is that, like, we've got physical skills, right? We got four utility physical skills: kick, throw bolus, bolus charge, and stop. We've got an elite physical skill, which I'm actually using now, um, which is rampage, but no healing physical skill. And something that's really weird to me is that they've got mending. Why don't you make that a physical skill? <laughs> that makes perfect sense. You're just mending your wounds, like tying bandage around it. It makes so much sense to consider that a, key, a physical skill. And you've got this skill that reduces the recharge by, uh, by, tw by I think it's 20%. Is it 20% on, on peak performance? Um, and, and you could make then mending. You got a 16 second heal skill that removes three conditions, right? And heals you for 6,500. That is something that could come in a lot of handy. It's something that could be very useful. Uh, but it's just uh, it's just not there. It's just not not considered a physical skill. It could also trigger that damage boost um, from peak performance, but they don't have it. Um, anything else that we do not have? We've got let me see. We got signets all across the board. We don't have a healing physical skill. We don't have an elite shout. And we need one, frankly. We need an elite shout. Give me some kind of shout that puts a whole crap ton of boons on people, right? Kind of like save yourselves for guardians, but it's elite, so it would apply it to you could apply just a whole bunch of boons to everybody around you. Like um like don't give up or stay in the fight or something like that. Perhaps you could have a shout that's like uh that's like uh, don't give up or something like that and, and you could just target a downed ally and just instantly revive them You know don't give up and just instantly revive one down ally put it on like a two-minute cooldown or something like that That could be really really cool um, You know so there's let me see the shouts we, we covered the banners we covered the stances and then you know meditations. Yeah, there you go and um you know, and I believe for a while that I think Spellbreaker probably should have some skills that improve the meditation skills, right? Give us a give us a trait that reduces the meditation skills recharge by twenty percent, right? I mean, come on, seriously, make natural healing a twenty second recharge if you just take a trait. 
right? Make make a trait called steady your mind or something like that, and just give my my dagger skills and my my meditation skills a 20% recharge reduction. That would be awesome. <laughs> okay, or um um. Well, basically, that's it. That's that's really the only idea I have. <laughs> but I think it would work. I think it would work well. You know? So, let me see. We're actually... We're actually... Okay, we did actually earn that reward. So, we've just got nothing toward the Saurian caches. The Saurian cache! New build available. Game's gonna restart in 30 minutes... Or, sorry, 3 minutes. World Be World is now shutting down... Oh, no, no, no. No. Please let me get one more tick. Please. I've got to get this last tick before they get... Oh, no, no, no. Stop. World v. World is shutting down or prepare for a new build. Oh, this is bad. Just wait 30 seconds, please. Oh, it's taking me out. Didn't even get. let me get that extra tick. Okay, so it's probably an important build then. If, if, if it's making me restart the game in three minutes. So just gonna restart the game really quick and just just get that new build on there just so it stops bugging me about it. But um, anyway, I mean I'm really happy with the changes to Spellbreaker, um, making it more more viable in PVE. Um, tomorrow you're not coming. Oh, that's really sad. I'm sad about this. Making it more viable in PVE while at the same time uh, toning it down just a slight bit in. Uh, in PvP, probably a definitely definitely a warranted change. Um, okay, just stay tuned, just one second, because I just uh, just logging out and just restarting the game just so we can get this new build here. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with the spellbreaker changes. Feel like overall we were buffed. Work uh, three three or four to twelve. Okay, that's not good. Um, I I might be streaming. Um, I might be streaming um, after 12 still. I might try and keep the stream going for a while, but uh, we'll see. I might get really tired tomorrow. <laughs> I might have some stuff to do tomorrow as well, so I might not be able to stream after 12, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. We might be able to do this. All right, so hold on. I'm logging in. Just had to restart the game for the new build. Let's go ahead and check it out. Probably going to be just some kind of server crash or something that it fixed. Um, or it could be some some really bad bug that it that they fixed. Hopefully, we'll see. I'll actually I'll check it after the stream. I won't check it right now because we weren't able to get that extra tick. I can't believe that. Just one more tick. You couldn't give us just one more tick. And we were able to actually gain the outnumbered bonus the entire time we were in those desert uh, borderlands. So pretty much the entire stream actually we were. We were in there, and we were continuously gaining that uh, that thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and open these loot boxes, shall we? Uh, well, first, hold on. First, I just wanted to check on these auric weapons because we're working toward getting the auric weapons, right? So let's just go ahead and just search for auric, and then we can check. I'm probably not going to choose the sword, but uh, but let's just choose. Let's just see. That's a pretty cool-looking sword, honestly. Longbow. I love the longbow. Very cool-looking longbow. Okay, we've got uh, the short bow. Of course, I can't use short bow because I'm a warrior. Axe, not a bad axe, honestly, but I do have to say I like the merciless axe a little more. We got the dagger, very cool dagger. Great sword. That that is a cool great sword, but honestly, since I have sunrise, I just I, I can't I can't switch away from that. The mace is pretty cool. I probably will get the mace actually. It's a, it's a good one. You got the pistol. Can't use pistols because we are warriors. We are warriors. I'm a warrior. The rifle looks really cool. Scepter's okay, but we can't use scepter. Of course, we can't use focus either. Torch could use torch if I switch to berserker, but I'm not going to get the torch. I'm not a big fan. Um, shield. Oh no, too shield or too too small. Definitely too small of a shield. If it were bigger, I would say that that's freaking awesome, but probably no. The mace is probably going to be what I end up going with. Um, either that or potentially the axe, but I really like the uh, merciless axe. Perhaps the longbow. I don't know. It's a little too thin for me, but anyway, I would like for it to be thicker. Thick! Extra thick! <laughs> anyway, so uh, let's go ahead and open these loot boxes. Let's see what we got. First of all, we got the veteran Quetzal cache, and um, 
and let's just like uh, just clear it out. Okay, we got the obsidian shards here. We also got featherline pouch. Cannot preview it. Sometimes you could preview those things. Okay, let's uh, put everything that you could deposit over here. Is what I'm gonna do. We got two thorned caches. Meme on my channel. Cache. Thorned cache. Okay, we got some fangs there. We got some silk here. We got some more th uh, spikes. Okay, heavy supply bag. We got uh, some silk. Chest of the mist. Let's see how much we get. How many uh, testimonies of heroics? We got six. Not too great, but it's something. Okay, we got uh, a rare longbow. Let's go ahead and salvage this, and we'll put the uh, ecto. We, we the non-existent ecto. Um, we, I think there was a server crash of some kind. Let's see. We appear to be okay now, but I think there was some kind of server crash that went on. So that was a little crazy. We're not done opening the loot boxes, so stay tuned. <laughs> okay, and uh, let's see. Still loading. Loading up. I like that Lunar New Year uh, artwork. I really like that. Okay. All right, so we got the Champion Mordrum Guard Cache. Good, our ping is back to normal. We got the uh, Dragonite Ore and the Imperial Fragments, which we're going to put over here. We got some uh, stuff to salvage. Noxus Seed Pods. We could uh, deposit that. Bloodstone Dust, which we could deposit. Crafting Material Coffer, which is here. And we get more stuff to deposit. Like, a lot of different things to deposit. Very cool. All right, and then... We've got the eight Mist Warp packets, the star of the show. Let's see what we get. And boom, not nothing. Definitely we did get this Elonian Leather Square. I'm super happy about that. Definitely this is one of the times where you actually get something super useful out of those Mist Warp packets. Um, and it allows you... I think the price is kind of going down on them recently. But it's definitely a good thing to have. Definitely a good, uh, uh, what's it called? Definitely, oh no, there's seven gold. Quite a bit, right? That's, that's still a pretty good, uh, a really good price. Let me see how many I have, actually. Material storage and Elonian. I have three of them, and I just got a new one. So, oh. So that means if I sold all of them, I get, like, almost 30 gold. So, it's pretty good. I'm gonna deposit, go ahead and deposit that. Now I have four. Right, and uh, of course the Delvimore Steel Ingots, which we sometimes get. Got four of those. We've got Damask. We've got two bolts of Damask. So those are Ascended Materials. Hold on, let me just uh, see how much we got from here. Ascended Materials, here we go. 30 globs of Dark Matter. Uh, we're, we actually have two Spirit Wood Planks as well. We occasionally get those also. Uh, three Vision Crystals. That definitely helps with crafting uh, Ascended Armor. 32 Imperial Stars. We got so much of that crap. We got so many of those from Winter's Day, mainly. Also, I have 9 Dragonite Ingots and 13 Bloodstone Bricks. 3 Crystalline Ingots. The, the, we don't we don't get that stuff from World of World, so that's not really that useful to us. Let's go ahead and salvage the Blues and Greens here. And we got some Mithril and Silk and Leather, which is to be expected, honestly. Let's go ahead and use this Luck. And how close are we? Let's just really quick check how close we are to... Okay, so if we gain basically 2,250 more luck, then we can gain one extra percent of magic fine. So that's good. We just need to, you know, continue continue being on that grind for, uh, for luck there. So we got three obsidian shards. We ended up getting a tier 7 crafting material, which is always nice. Let's go ahead and gain the testimonies of heroics. 24 which we'll go ahead and consume. There we go. And of course, as always, we get the Tomes of Knowledge and occasionally we get those Siege Blueprints and everything. So that's going to be about it. Just deposit all those and then the last thing to do is just sell the junk items and the runes and everything. So let's go ahead and do that. And uh, tomorrow, I will definitely be back same time, same place. Uh, make sure to uh, share this around. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. It really helps, and my channel is growing. I'm seeing accelerated growth, and I'm getting really happy about that. So uh, so definitely share if you enjoyed. Uh, leave a like and subscribe, of course, as always. And we will be back tomorrow, uh, nine or sorry, 10 a.m. Korean time and uh, 8 p.m. Um, 
Eastern time, okay? So if you're in the United States, keep, keep note of that time. Anyways, I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time.